Hey guys, welcome back to Let It Roll. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about my favorite strategy. It's a version of the Iron Cross. The reason I like to play the Iron Cross is because you get paid on every single roll. There's a lot of people out there that don't like the Iron Cross because you hedge that five, six, and the eight. All right, but I like the fact that, it, I think a little bit opposite of that, I think I like the fact that I wanna get paid on every single roll instead of just say on the inside or just the six and eight like most people like to play. To me, I'd much rather go into a field of rocks and find money under every single rock than go into a field of rocks and hope I find money under sporadic rocks. That's the kind of way I look at the Iron Cross. I'm getting paid on every roll. The reason I use this strategy is because I wanna make sure that I get paid on every roll so I can regress after three to four rolls depending on how aggressive I wanna be. So I want you guys to think about that. For those of you that are watching this video, tell me what you think of the Iron Cross and then tell me what you think of the version that I like to play here and tell me if you would play any version of the Iron Cross down in the comments. I want every one of you that watch this video to comment and let me know what you think of those three things. Let's take a look at how this works. All right, so my layout, I, I would typically buy in for you know about $500 minimum for this particular layout with this amount of money. You can do this strategy with different amounts and we can kind of go over that a little bit here as we go. But first of all, I'm just gonna lay the, the whole layout out real quick and talk about it in, in steps and what happens per step, okay? So if we look at my initial layout, this is what I like to lay out right here. All right, I start with a $25 don't pass, and then I have a $25 five, a $30 six, $30 eight, and a $10 nine. All right, because of the fact that these are the more common numbers, I do wanna make more with these numbers than I do with the filled numbers that are gonna hit, okay? But it is still gonna give me a payment if these numbers don't hit. All right, so what's gonna happen if we throw any of these inside numbers? If you look at it here, we throw a, a five, you're gonna lose the filled, you'll get paid $35, so you're profiting a quarter because you'll put this back in the field. And that's my whole goal here, is to win a quarter on every inside roll. And this is just a bonus of $10 if anything else hits. I'm happy winning a quarter. That's why I'm okay hedging that $10 a little bit with these numbers. If I can win a quarter every time, even though I'm losing 10, I'm happy with that. All right, so that's what happens if you would throw any inside number. You'll win a quarter on the five, six, and the eight, if you throw the nine, it's a tad bit different because you win 14 for the nine, 10 for the filled, so you only win $24, but I still call that a quarter, all right? So I still got the best numbers in my favor, and now if I throw any other number, I'm still collecting something. So let's look at the pros and cons of this layout and how I like to play it. All right, so let's start off right from the beginning, right from a come out roll. This is what can happen to you on the come out roll. This is one of the cons of this strategy. For all of you that, that play the don't pass or, or know what the don't pass is, this bet right here can lose on a seven and 11 on the come out roll, all right? So that's one of the downfalls of this strategy is you're taking a big risk on that come out roll to lose $25 right off the bat, okay? But there's a couple things you can do and there again, these are all things that I'll do based on how I'm feeling at that time. I may feel frisky and say, screw it, I'm gonna take a chance that a seven or 11 ain't gonna show up on the come out roll and just go ahead and throw the come out roll, all right? But something you can do to somewhat hedge that a little bit and to minimize the loss uh, or the risk on that come out roll is you can go ahead and hop the sevens for however much you want. I would never hop them more than a dollar each, okay? That's just the risk I'm willing to take, okay? And I'd hop the yo for $1. If you felt more comfortable hopping, you know, for $2 each and $2 on the yo, you know, that's up to you. The thing is, is you start eating into your profits as you start doing stuff like this, all right? I'm willing to do this amount right here on a $25 don't pass. What this does for me is if a seven is thrown, let's say this is the 617, Okay, let's say the seven is thrown. These are hot bets. I guess I should put them over here. So hopefully you can see them. There's a six one. If you can't see this in the frame, I don't know if you can or can't. There, I'm covering the six one. All right, and then we're looking for the five two, and we need a four three. Okay, where's the four three on here? 
four three. Okay, so if you can't see them in the frame, I didn't pay attention. I've got the sixes hop there, and I'll put the yo over here so you can see it. Okay, and I'm hopping a yo. All right, so what is that going to do for the come out roll? First of all, if you throw, let's say that we throw the five two seven. Okay, you're going to lose the four three. You're going to lose the six two uh, six one. Sorry, this should have been here. Okay, it should have been like that. Let's say we throw the six one. Okay, so if we throw the six one seven, we're going to lose the four three, the five two and we're gonna lose the yo. So we lose $3 right off the bat, okay? But we're gonna win $15 for that. And this stays, okay? So we win 15, we also lose the don't pass, all right? So what's gonna happen here is we win 15, but we lose $28. So we're gonna go backwards $13 if any of those numbers roll. So that's one negative with this strategy is that you have that initial come out that you have to get through. Okay, now let's look at a couple positives based on as the flow of this strategy works out. Okay, this field wouldn't be here on the come out roll, just so you guys know that. All right, so let's look at the flow of this strategy and how it starts from start to finish, the way I like to play it anyways. All right, so let's say that we throw a 10 on the come out roll. If you hedged it with the hops and the yo, that's up to you. You would lose that $4 if you did. Puck would turn on. Now let's look at some of the positives of this strategy. Okay, we would put our field. And now I like to lay the four. All right. And the reason I like to lay the four is, is because it gives you a little bit more of protection against a 0.7 out. I'm going to cover what happens negative in this strategy as we go. But I'm going to go with the flow of the game because this is how the flow of the game would go. All right, so I'm hedging with the four, so I've got a lay four. I do cover the hard four with $5, and I do throw a $2 hopping one, three, four every roll. Okay, I regress after three rolls, and when I regress, I will pull down my lay bet, but let's get to that point first. All right, so some of the positives with this strategy and this layout is, is now we threw the point on the come out. Let's say that the next number is a seven, all right? So we have a point seven out. Okay, so let's look at what happens. So with the point seven out, this lay is gonna get paid 25. This don't is gonna get paid 25. So this is the amount we ended up losing, all right, on a point seven out with this layout. So you've got 25, you've got 50, you've got $62 that you go backwards with. All right, that's on a 0.7 out. So that's not super bad, okay? Because let's just do a quick flip of this. A quick flip of this. Let's say that we didn't lay and we didn't play the don't pass. All right, let's just say we played it normal, like a normal person would go on a pass line and we'll just do a $10 pass line instead of the $25 don't. But this same exact layout, Okay, this same exact layout without any kind of don't hedge in here. Point comes on the 10, we throw a 0.7. This is what we lose now. Okay, so you lose 75, that's 100. You lose $115 compared to $62. All right, that's almost twice as much if you're playing the light side with the iron cross strategy. Okay. Let's get back to the normal way that I lay it out. We've got that, we've got this, we've got this. Now remember, the reason I like to lay it out this way is so I'm making green chips on the inside numbers. All right, I'd have my hard four and my hop in one three. So let's go ahead and just do the three rolls that I like to play for, okay? So now, we're gonna do all of the positive things right now first. Okay, so the key to this strategy is staying away from early sevens, okay, which will take you backwards somewhat, you saw. Staying away from the point, I'm sorry, not the point, the four, which isn't a huge deal, which I'm gonna show you here in a minute, and then staying away from the points. So basically you wanna throw a bunch of numbers that aren't the point, the four, or the don't pass. Okay, the, the point and the four really are a wash though, and you'll see that here in a minute. All right, so let's say that we throw the eight. We're gonna lose the field. I'm gonna get paid $35. When you replace the field, you got your profit of 25. Okay, 
And remember, there's many things you can do with this strategy. You can take and press this right off the bat, but I'm gonna just show you, we'll do the, 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 um, the strategy non-aggressive right now. All right, so now if we threw the seven, just a quick recount, we would lose the $62 minus 25, you know, whatever that is. You do the math, that way we could keep this video going. But it lessens each roll you get. So let's say we throw the five now. All right, you lose the field. Okay, you get paid 35, you put this back in the field, you lose this hot bet also. I'm just gonna replace that hot bet, okay? Now, let's say we throw the six, you lose the field, you get paid 35, and that's my third hit. So I'm gonna go here. So now I've got 75 minus the $6 there. So I've got $69 profit, okay? And now I regress. I'm playing at a $10 table. I bring down my lay. We don't hop anymore. And you bring down your hard way. So now I'm gonna regress to a minimum iron cross or more minimum, like for this $10 table. So now I'm gonna do 18 and 18, 15 on the five, 10 in the field. Okay. So this is a $61 layout now. So now that I regressed, I had 75 minus six, which is 69. I regressed to a $61 layout. So I'm guaranteed an $8 profit on this strategy. And at this point, on the fourth roll, I just start collecting and pressing from here. Okay. Now remember, at any time, I may change this up. I may collect and press a couple rolls. I may just go heavy with it. I may not even regress. I mean, who knows, okay? I'm just showing you the base layout of how I start and how it plays out or could play out. All right, so that is what we want to get to with the way I like to play. This is, this is the whole goal get past three rolls and start playing with money that's profit. All right, so let's look at some of the negatives, some of the things that can happen to you and what that looks like when you're playing it the way I like to play it. So let's go back out here. Let's put our layout back out the way I like to start it. All right, and the way that I just showed you, that whole process that I just showed you is the way I play every new shooter, every new shooter. Okay, so once we seven out and the game starts over, you know, if I had already made it to the regression, I come right back to the way that the, this video started and I do it again with every shooter that way. All right, so let's start with this layout. All right, I already told you one of the negatives is the don't pass on the come out. That was the first thing. So if you wanna read, you know, relearn that, rewind it and watch that. Okay, here's the other parts I was talking about. Let's say point comes out and it's a six. You're always going to cover the point, if it's one of the inside numbers, with your money anyways, okay? With this amount, whatever it is. If it's a nine, you're still gonna put $10. If it's an eight, 30, five, so on. Always cover this point, okay? Now, when I lay out my lay four, my hard four, and my hot bets, this is what can happen, okay? So these are other negatives, but they're not super bad to this strategy. That's why I say you're just trying to stay away from the point, you're trying to stay away from the four, and definitely don't throw sevens, because the longer the roll is, the more money you're gonna make with any strategy, so to speak, but this one also. All right, if you're hitting lots of points, it is a little bit of a bummer, but it ain't super bad, and this is the reason why. Okay, we had our come out roll, it was the eight. Let's say they throw the eight right back. Okay, so what's gonna happen is you're gonna lose your field and you're gonna lose your don't pass. So you lose $35, but they're gonna turn around and pay you $35. So that's why I say it's not so bad to hit the points if the point happens. You actually kinda want the point to be an inside number with this strategy. Okay, so basically it's a wasted roll because you got paid 35 and you lost 35, puck comes off. The only negative thing now is you gotta deal with the come out roll again. Okay, but that's what happens if the point hits. It's not a super big deal, unless it's a four or a 10. If the four or 10 is the point and they throw the point right back, you're gonna win 10 and lose 25. So you will go backwards $15 if the point's a four or a 10 with this strategy. But remember, there's holes in every strategy and, there, uh, and there's risks with every strategy, all right? But that's what happens if the point gets hit, so it's not a super big deal. All right, you just don't want it to keep happening because you're wasting rolls.
So let's say that it's a six again, or the point's a six now on the come out roll. What happens if they throw the four? Okay, so if a hard four gets thrown, you're gonna actually win $35. Well, you're gonna lose the 50, so we'll set this here. This is a loss, but I'm gonna show you here. So you're gonna, you're gonna win 35 here. You're gonna win 10 here. Okay, and you're gonna lose this $2. So you lose $52 but you get back 30, 40, you get back $45. So you go backwards $7 on a hard four. So that does suck, but it's still not super bad, all right? And the game just, the flow just keeps on going. You just put another lay bet if it's within the first three rolls, okay? You just put another lay bet out there, all right? So what happens if the one three gets hit, okay? So if the one three gets hit, you're gonna lose your lay bet, okay? You're gonna get paid $30 here. You're gonna lose your uh, hard way. You get paid 30 and you get paid 10 in the field. All right, so you make $40 and you lose $57, okay? I'm sorry, yeah, 25, 30. So you get paid $30 and this is what you end up losing here. So you are gonna take a little bit more of a hit if you throw the one, three, four but it's still not super devastating because you could make up that loss if an inside number gets hit the next roll, all right? But I just wanted to show you the negatives of this layout and what happens with them. So in reality, when you look at it, if you throw the point or if a four is thrown, you know, the point's not so bad. The four is, can be a little bit, you know, it's a bummer but it's not overbearing, okay? So what you're hoping for with this strategy is throwing numbers other than the point, the four, or big red, which can happen. And if you're throwing a lot of inside numbers, your money can add up quick, all right? So that's the pros and cons with this strategy. Um, the thing about it is, is it gives you tons of opportunity because you got plenty of money on the table to be able to press aggressively and collect aggressively. You know, and like I said, as long as you stay away from these three things, the seven, the point, or the four, which can happen, I've done it many times, um, you know, you can get into the profit pretty quick with this layout, all right? And you can do whatever you choose to do from there on. But just remember, I personally like to, to roll three or four rolls, and if the point don't hit, if the four don't hit, or if the seven don't hit within those first three or four rolls that are rolled, I'll regress and I'll also pull down my lay bet. The other thing is, is if I knock myself off the don't pass, you know, by hitting the point a couple times, I'll move to the pass line if I've already made a few dollars because it still kind of evens out that way. All right, so this is how I personally like to play the Iron Cross. All right, guys, so tell me what you guys think of that. I want you to, everybody that watches this video, leave me a comment of what you think of the Iron Cross, what you think of how I play the Iron Cross, and would you play any type of version of the Iron Cross and kind of explain how you would like to play it if you would. Again, I'm gonna play this, this strategy out Wednesday night, and if you wanna come and join me, I'm gonna play it out live and we'll see how it works out for me. There again, I'm not guaranteeing that this strategy is gonna win, it's just how I like to play because I like to collect on every roll. If any of you guys need casino gear, I do have these shirts available. It's gonna be in the description down below. I might put a little link here on the screen for you. Um, it'll help out the channel and it'll also give you something to wear the next time you go to the casino. So again, guys, I just wanna thank you for hanging out with me and I'll catch you guys soon. Take care.